Hello, 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 uh, Prakash and Katrina. So today we are going to talk about the joys and pleasures of playing two very specific games, poker and chess, that we are taking the liberty of calling maths-based for the scope of today's discussion. So I have with me uh, Katrina Katushko to my right, who is a very, very excellent poker player. She used to play professionally. Uh, and she knows a lot about poker. She knows things about poker that I probably will never know. And below me on the screen is Prakash Singh, uh, who comes from a maths background. Katrina comes from an, from an economics background. Uh, Prakash comes from a maths background, and he's a very excellent chess player. And again, like he knows things about chess that I have no hope of knowing within the next few months, by which time he will know more things. And both of them, and both of them are very strong uh, in uh, poker and chess, respectively. So let me start with Katrina. Um, so just just say a few words about what got you into poker in the first place. Like you come from Ukraine, right? So you, when you were growing up, uh, were you a fan of the game? Did you start playing it from a very young age, or did you pick it up like much later? No, uh, I didn't know anything about it. And in my head, it was gambling, bad, uh, never do that. And uh, I got introduced to poker in when I was around 20 years old. I was in university and I had a boyfriend who was a poker dealer, um, who was a student and he did it as a part-time job. And that was my first introduction. Right. Uh, Prakash, uh, what was your introduction into chess like? Or at what age? Did you first discover your love for the game? Well, I loved chess from a very young age, actually. But I never really pursued it because of limitations of the people who I could play it, play it with. But the moment when I finished my master's was when I got the freedom of investing time. And then there was this online chess where you don't need people to play with. And yeah, that is when I really started focusing on chess. So, for, so the both of you, uh, you like none of you were like geniuses at the game before you turned adults, right? Like, well, Prakash said he loved the game when he was young, but he didn't start playing it as much as he maybe does now until much later. And Katrina, you said you didn't even know much about it until you were twenty. So, were there other games like similar to chess and poker that you loved playing like in your young age like one could maybe think of i don't know go the the game go or other like board games or other card based games so uh, katarina um, well <laughs> To be fair, I still wouldn't call myself a genius as I see a very big pass ahead that I still have to go through. And uh, no, there wasn't any. I enjoyed computer games, but regular ones as everybody does probably. And uh, no, I didn't play anything similar to poker at all. I knew literally nothing about it until my early 20s. I didn't know it was even a job, uh, as most people do. No, not at all. And I would say that poker is probably the most misrepresented game that could ever be on media and on films because there is probably zero correct things. Okay, maybe 5%, like, yes, you need the several players. <laughs> but that's about the only right things that they get right. And they get wrong everything starting from the basic rules to uh, 
the betting sequences and even close people went to the casino. If you go into a normal casino, uh, you'd see that everybody's wearing like trainers and some people wear tracksuits and nobody dresses up like for like about to see the queen. And mm. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. Like Prakash, like, let me come to you on this. When you look at films, books, popular novels, popular TV series, and you look at the games that characters from those uh, media play, like, did you used to see chess a lot? Because, Not a lot, because but I, I did see it quite often. And strangely enough, uh, the portrayal of chess that I saw on I in, in in movies uh, actually it's kind of repelled me from the game more right. than draw me towards the game. Can you give some examples? Oh uh, yeah, there was this there is a Satyajit Ray movie from 1976. Then uh, there is this movie Pawn Sacrifice from 2000. I can't hear you very well. Can you maybe uh, can you hear me now? Yes, no, it's fine. Yeah, so there is this movie Pawn Sacrifice. Yeah. And then uh, there is this. On the Fisher, on the Fisher's Pasty game. Yeah. And then there are very, very uh, short references of chess uh, in, in many movies. Like they, they, they think of it as something very shrewd uh, or something very cunning. It's right, 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 right. It's not a battle of ideas. It's just mm. someone being very. Yeah. Someone being aggressive towards someone else uh, in a very, uh, say, uh, wi willful manner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like wily, someone being deceptive. Very wily, yeah. Yeah, let me let me connect this thought to poker because the the example uh, that I gave of Casino Royale, where like the climax involves this game of poker, the very same theme is uh, like the very same same theme occurs there, as in there is this villain and there is James Bond, and there is a game of poker involved, and everything that the person watching the film is supposed to take from it involves assumptions like some player is going to be deceptive now, some other player is going to be, I don't know, is, is going to cheat maybe, or maybe not cheat. So when you see those things, Katrina, like, do you think like, those are very gross misrepresentations or do you think well those things are part of the game but they need not necessarily be everything that one needs to know about the game like you mentioned that thing about uh, I, a little earlier about people being overdressed for poker as you see in films so like, yeah go on yes no i actually completely agree with what prakash said uh, it, the misrepresentation is down to the point when it where it repels you from the game and uh I often don't tell people I do poker, um, like casual people that I don't know very well, because then they ask, start asking me quite un unpleasant questions, which I don't, and these conversations are not the ones I just want to have, you know, I want to have what, a normal what, what, day, what, and I don't want to spend too much. What could be an example of such uh, an unpleasant question? Uh, well, for example, uh, if I tell from the weirdest ones I've got, uh, when I told someone I do poker professionals, they just started laughing into my face. Uh, right, right. And uh, of course, uh, when something that is your life, something that is your career gets ridiculed and taken not seriously, uh, well, it's just unpleasant. And this is the reaction I get from most people. And that, yeah, the misrepresentation in films, like I never watch films that... Um, mm -hmm feature poker because uh, I find them is it absolutely funny like an absolute comedy even when it's not meant to be uh, or just unpleasant because then if I watch it with my friends or family members they ask me oh is this true and no right. none of it is true right, right, right. absolutely nothing is you see on tv about poker is true is apart from the amount of players you need you right. need few players yeah <laughs> That's a good one, and, and with chess, yeah, I I agree to Katrina. Katrina, yeah, like like with chess, for example. Yeah, I, I agree with Katrina on this point. Like oftentimes I have seen sorry you go that on. The, the way a chess board is placed, say in the middle of a scene in a film, is just wrong. Like you, you don't place a board that way if you're playing. You know, like the the square to your right has to be to to, to the most right of you has to be a white square, not a black square. 
like that's that sort of mistakes so like again like let me let's just finish this thought here with this question to you prakash uh, so how crucial do you think these misrepresentations are like if one is talking about influence if one is talking about how a generation of young viewers might watch a film and want to play that game like for example uh, i'm doing research in maths and so are you like i remember when i was young i saw a very bogus film where there was this guy who was very good at maths and he could solve many difficult basically calculations he could calculate very well and i saw that i knew even then that calculations is not maths it's just calculations like doing maths means coming up with new ideas and all those things but i saw that film when i was young and it instilled in me a wish uh, an ambition to grow up and mm-hmm. do the real thing so like do you do you agree or do you not agree that such a role can even be uh, like exerted by films that misrepresent uh, chess or poker or other games oh uh, yeah it's, yeah uh, that is exactly i think what katrina said and uh, so i have had this repulsion against against movies which discuss mathematicians right so there is a movie on ramanujan and, uh, and people have asked me to watch that movie say almost every month or every two months but i have never watched it and i have made it a concerted effort not to never watch it because right. i know the degree of discomfort i will go through right if i ever watch it and mm-hmm. yeah, it's similar to it's chess is very similar yeah right one okay let me there is one point i'd like to make mm-hmm. oh sorry mm-hmm. uh um this misrepresentation for me specifically in poker is not necessarily a bad thing as for someone who's doing it for a living because that misrepresentation attracts a certain type of people who have believes that the game is like that so obviously when they come in the games they have very weak presence as an actual player yes, right. uh, but there is a lot of money they're spending yes. so for me it's actually can be quite good uh the other thing is that of course i have to somehow handle myself and be polite to a person who i find ridiculous and i have to keep you know basic manners and not laugh at them <laughs> so um that is that is rather challenging but yeah it's, it can be good so you you are here talking about people that you meet in person while playing poker Yes, yeah, so you meet sometimes these funny characters in casino who will come in and put the glasses, the dark glasses on in already well indoors. Nobody wears glasses indoors. If you see somebody wearing glasses, you straight away know this person knows nothing about the game. They watch the films, they think they look cool. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then you can specifically start targeting them because like from things like this you can already make an assumption okay this player might be bad i need to watch what he's doing more precisely maybe i can make money of him yeah. and yeah that, usually that's true yeah that's a good point like given the very nature of the game what you just described tends to be good for the economy of the casino or 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 for the game basically which need not be the case with chess like when there is no money involved having a bad player is not going to make you feel good well it might make you feel good if you win very easily but other than that not so much okay uh, let me just move to a different question do you have anything to add prakash or um no okay yeah so pretty uh, much it's yeah, so good i was going to ask uh, you guys now about the way online games or games played in the online sphere are sort of looking like the next next level of normalcy for games like uh all kinds of board games or many kinds of as i said like calculation based maths based games so what are your thoughts on that i'll start with katrina like for example do you think uh in the aftermath of these lockdowns like all over the world do you think uh like casinos will not maybe continue to be the most prominent centers for playing poker and uh, maybe i don't know people might um, move online to be honest uh, online poker has been on the rise for the last about 10 years and uh, it's already been proven to be better than uh, live poker in certain ways 
So, um, if I'm honest, I don't think it will differ much because uh, the type of people who go to casinos, the type of people who want to have fun, they still will exist after the, uh, the lockdown. And the same way uh, people who play online, they still will be drawn online. So I don't think the lockdown actually has affected it uh, much. Um, I think people who have been wanting to play recently, yes, they played slightly more online than they would, but with no major difference. No, but I mean, can't this be a difference though? Say there is this locality and that locality has 20 or 50 poker enthusiasts and there's only one big casino in that area and say post lockdown that casino cannot hold 50 poker players at any one time and say they can only hold 30 players. Mm -hmm. So for the remaining 20 who do want to go to a casino and play poker can't but can't play poker because of these new rules. So they will face difficulties, right? They will face difficulties playing the game in real life. So they might be forced to move online and like have their whole experience there. Um, I assume, yes, uh, of course. Uh, it, it, there is definitely some truth in it, but on a bigger scale, I, I still don't think it will be much difference because um, the type of people who go in casinos we tend to call them recreational players, players who play for fun. Right. So these type of people, if the poker, if live poker wouldn't be an option to them, they probably wouldn't play because they want a live experience. Mm -hmm. So rather than transitioning to online, they just wouldn't play at all, or they will play something else. You know, they will, I don't know, play an MTG tournament or uh, so, so something. Playing, so, yeah, so playing poker online, uh, keeping the webcams on, uh, how close it is it? to the real, real experience? Of course it's not. Um, I have never. Is it going to be, do you think? I have never heard of uh, keeping webcams on, to be honest. Uh, on, on all the websites when you play, the, nobody switches on, like there's no, yeah, because it's even, not, necessary. not a button to switch on the webcam. Yeah, because it's not necessary. But no, no, well, it's, um, I don't, I don't know if there is a place for this uh, on a commercial scale. Right. There might be few individual people who would do this as a hobby, but I don't, I don't think this is where it's going. Because the way the online poker is now, it's been like this for about 10 years. And um, I think live is live and online is online and it differs quite significantly. So people who tend to play live will either play live or not play at all. Right. Right, right. And people who play online will still play online. And is it free? Like playing poker online, is it free? Or do you have to pay to create an account or have a premium membership or something? No, no, it's free. It's same as with live poker, where uh, depending on the time of game you play, the casino or the website casino charges you exactly the same way. Uh, the structure of charge is exactly the same as in live okay, casino. Okay, okay. Of course, you don't have... A, a valley to come in and give you some food and you don't have people around but um, the game experience is very is similar in a way and cost wise is exactly the same as well okay uh, prakash like if you if you were to draw comparisons between the online experience the online chess experience and the over the board chess experience what would your like main point be would it be i don't know pre moves would it be uh, getting to see how your opponent is reacting, like getting to read the body language of your opponent? Uh, would it be the um, audience? Like, would it be like the feel of touching the pieces? Like, what what would the main points be? I think all of those are actually main points. What you just said, free moves and the rule of touching the piece. And one important aspect is that the way you look at the board in in uh, you look at a 3D board is different from the way you look at a 2D board. And somehow your mind thinks differently in, mm. in two, those two different situations. Mm. And because we play so much online chess these days, our minds have been trained to think about the online, the 2D positions. And when we convert that into um, on the board position, mm. it takes some time for the mind to get accustomed. Mm. And I think if someone goes on, on the board without practice, uh, that person can make mistakes very easily. Can you get a bit louder? Oh, uh, yes, fine, fine, fine. Can you hear me now? 
yeah I, i'm saying yeah, um, yeah we heard you i think people yeah. can make mistakes when they go on board if they are accustomed to online chess and also there is this uh, there is this thing with many top players in chess i know uh, that many of them at the start of any game uh, touches all the pieces of their own before making the first move like many of them you can't you can't do that on a screen like you can't just do like this on a screen and feel like i think that's just nervous energy i mean you are nervous before starting the game so you do everything possible so that i guess your body yeah. is doing something you're not just sitting alone and okay right. waiting for the game to start right right and uh, and uh, what would you say about the audience point like you're getting people and same question to katrina uh, that like you, you, uh, you, people are watching you play uh, how does that affect the actual playing experience how does the knowledge that whatever you're doing is being watched by a lot of people around you so i i i, I the kind of tournaments on the board that i have played in i mean the audience have been other players they haven't been say other uh, other observers who are just there to observe the game mm. and and people come to watch your games only when your game becomes very interesting and very long otherwise everyone is busy in their own games so i think it's a very very minor point right but but even in online chess uh, i mean if you are playing in a tournament you do get the feeling sometimes that people are watching your game right right so it's, it's not there's a slight difference but it's not that major and katrina what would you say about this audience point like does it play a role um i ag- agree with prakash here where in live game in the casino people will only come over if they have nothing better to do which usually they're busy and actually with online you can get more exposure because uh streaming on twitch for example uh, is very popular or recording people f- recorded for youtube channels and then obviously they get thousands and thousands of views um as well in big tournaments sometimes um even if there's nobody watching you directly in a live uh, tournament they take notes they take tracks they post it on um publicly which made me very embarrassed for the rest of my life because once i've made something very stupid and now it's recorded on the internet forever yeah. <laughs> and there is a description of exactly what which right. day and what exactly sort of poker wise i've done and um, well shame stays with me and the criticism that people have of you are there to stay forever as well well uh, i can excuse myself and by saying it was several years ago i was very young and not very experienced and i didn't know what i was doing and yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody makes mistakes what can i say but with age of internet you can't avoid it like things get recorded and you just have to face consequences with every as- area of life yeah on i think i asked prakash the audience question this before i asked you so maybe i'll just move to my next next uh, round of questions and i'll, I'll start with you and katrina because that's what i'm trying to do um on twitch for example so chess is quite big on twitch but i'm guessing poker is much bigger uh, like the number of streamers uh, that poker has on twitch i am guessing like is more than the number of streamers that chess has right now and if i'm not wrong chess wasn't even that big on twitch let's say 3 years ago like it became a twitch phenomenon only very recently so with the the abundance of like twitch accounts or twitch streamers do you ever feel like again this is a question to you katrina and then the same question to prakash um then i'll pose the same question to prakash do you ever feel like with the abundance of twitch streamers uh, it is very it is going to be very hard for novices for people who don't know much about the sport much about the game to detect quality to detect basically quality or lack thereof like say i go into twitch though i mean i i do go into twitch every now and then but i do so to watch chess basically like most of the time say i go into twitch and i see someone is streaming poker i have no idea whether they're good or not say i get to see a rating but again i have no idea whether that is a good rating or a bad rating and i don't really have the time or the energy to look it up like say there is a number uh, that, that that's their rating i don't have the time or energy to look it up and see whether that's a good number or a bad number i can 
watch a stream like that for say five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and think that I have maybe learned something about the game. Where in reality, it might very well be the case that the player that I was watching was playing terribly. And not only did I learn anything proper or new, but I actually learned something like harmful. Harmful as in like, it will never suit me to play like that on an actual game. So do you ever fear this, this quality thing with Twitch? Well, uh, to be fair, I think it relates to any other area. Let me make an example. Imagine uh, you want to be, become a hairdresser. You don't know how to do hairdressing. So you get the first course that looks the best for you. You go and train. And then 10 years later, you realize, oh my God, the first course I ever did was awful. The quality was so bad. Mm -hmm. But because you have zero, if you have very low experience in the area, same with poker, same with probably anything, when you choose amongst where to learn, you very often make this mistake uh, because you only get to know what is better when you have something to compare with and when you have the experience to make this judgment. Yes, but, but with, hair, with hairdressers, for example, a bad hairdresser isn't going to do their job in front of an audience or on a platform of thousand other hairdressers. And that's the thing with online platforms. That's the thing with online streaming, basically. So this guy that I'm watching play poker on Twitch, say, uh, is streaming at the same time as, say, 100 other people streaming poker, uh, and say, 80 of them are playing very well, and 20 of them are being very bad. And I have no way of knowing who is good, who is bad. So I just randomly choose someone and I end up with this guy. But with hairdressing, that point doesn't really translate. Like, do you agree? Because like, what you say, I, get, I, mean, I can understand what you're saying. Like, of course, with experience, you, can, you will get better. With time, you will get better, like, obviously. But you're not going, you're not sort of getting better or getting worse in open view of everyone in like other walks of life, like be it hairdressing, be it driving a car, be it swimming, whatever. But with, on Twitch, like everyone can see you. Well, that, that, that's, I think I need to express myself slightly better because internet discloses so many parts of life. So it can be anything online. Imagine it's online hairdressing. You get these yeah. courses, you, you'd be surprised. Like basically anything that you do on the internet, you can learn something bad, you can learn something wrong, you can learn something good, and you can't. So um, I assume I should have clarified that, like, I don't mean to go to a course, imagine you buy an online course, and then it's the same, yeah. it's, it's more similar. You, you, it's just an inevitable part of life. Sometimes, if you're using internet, people are gonna see it, and there's no way to know, like, you can do something and you look very stupid, right. but you don't even know about it. And you only can t look back with the experience. Think of all the famous bloggers on YouTube. Uh, major vast majority of them have them removed. Like all the videos from first two years of their career, mm. they're all deleted. Mm. And they always speak about how, oh my God, I'm doing a reaction video of how I'm rewatching my original one. And it's like so bad. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's just, it's just what internet is. But yeah, you're gonna get a lot of trash uh, uh, content and it, it's the same as poker as with everything else. Prakash, uh, what were your thoughts on this uh, Twitch point? Uh, I think because of say the diversity of people you see on Twitch, mm -hmm. at least say playing, playing chess and say the popularity of those people who are playing those chess games you do seem to uh, associate, say, the number of subscribers or the number of viewers of some channel to probably some sort of uh, quality. And I think if there are more number of, say, if there is some grandmaster streaming, then, and if people see that, that grandmaster title, then definitely they would know that this is quality chess. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, we, we wouldn't have that problem of uh, deciding, not being able to decide what is quality in chess. Right, but even if it's not a grandmaster, say it's an international master, an international master can still be quite bad. Say it's an international ma master out of practice. Uh, well, I think, uh, so people like us, like people like me, uh, 
we don't have uh, that understanding of that level of chess where we can differentiate how an international plays and international master plays and how a grand master plays i think to our eyes uh, an international master a national master can you get a freedom master or a grand master they're all the same oh i'm sorry um, is is this okay now no, it's, yeah it's fine it's fine okay yeah Yeah, no, 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 no. You don't have to remove the earphones. You don't have to remove the earphones. Oh. Oh, okay. What I'm saying is that uh, the level of chess that these people play, the, these people who hold some titles, uh, that is so high that uh, that the the way they differ from each other is is not is not observable for us. Right. For for people like us, I mean, only when you become a grand master will you be able to tell that okay, this grand master is not playing well. Right. So, so that question doesn't arise. That question doesn't arise, right? That that is a good point, uh, Katrina. Like, is there is there a similar like is there a an is there an analogous concept of grandmaster in poker? Like, are there titles uh, that one can get by playing very well? Um, y- yes, uh, but to an extent because of the nature of the game, because it does involve variance, which people like to call luck. Uh, it has a degree of that. And sometimes it happens that people who are very bad became famous and win something. And of course, uh, if you look at someone's poker career and they've consistently won uh, World Series events, bracelets uh, for winning at poker, you get bracelets. So if somebody's got a collection of bracelets for the last, I don't know, five years consistently, you can say, okay, this person's definitely worthy of looking into. And, but then if somebody's got one bracelet, you might very seriously doubt it because one bracelet is not enough of a sample to decide whether this person's good. Because to be fair, anybody can accidentally get one bracelet. Yeah. But to make sure you've got more is that takes the skill. That is a good point. And also Prakash, like, uh, wouldn't you agree that with chess and maybe I'm guessing uh, to an extent with poker as well, like what streaming platform you're using can make a difference as well like if it's twitch you know that only like only the aficionados are there like only those who are absolutely really interested in streaming chess are there whereas on youtube you can have a comedian streaming chess you can have a cricket player streaming chess maybe just for one evening for fun but on twitch given the way twitch is structured like there are all these categories like there is a category for poker there is a category for chess category for go and all that so if you are in the chess category and you are streaming about random topics i think after a few of these streams you will be given a warning of some sort by by i don't know by the twitch authorities so like yeah so do you agree like that the streaming platform can make a difference so i i don't know if it will make a difference to uh to a person who is just entering the game i mean for right. is getting an introduction to the game but it will make a difference to me i mean who who is already into the game a lot right and someone who has spent the two or three years of of their life uh, with the game right yeah but i don't think uh, say and i wouldn't use the word amateur and someone who who is who has just who is just curious about the game and wants to see what the game is right for that person i don't think it makes a difference Right, right. Okay, yeah, that that sounds reasonable. Uh, one one thing that I want to come to next is the way online activities, especially activities such as playing chess or playing poker online, can combat loneliness or can combat I don't know feelings of, uh, or, or or the possibilities of feeling depressed or feeling uh, unmotivated to do to 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 do say I don't know. academic work research work or other kinds of work so let me start with you katrina like do you ever feel that say on a given day you're not feeling m- much motivated to do something very important that needs to, that needs to be done and if you then play a bit of poker say online and you do well or whatever like does that tend to motivate you ever Um, definitely not, because you see, for me, an important thing is to play poker because that is my job. So for me, it's not fun; it's a chore. So if I have a, if I'm having a bad day, I woke up, I'm groggy, I'm moody, uh, I would probably just not play any poker at all because, if anything, it can make me more depressed. Because you know, when you feel bad, you don't want to work. 
and you will procrastinate and do everything possible just to make sure you avoid Coming back when that. you're not you're not playing poker let's say professionally uh, did this used to be a thing mm, no never never really because even when i wasn't playing professionally i was trying to make an effort to become better, become so fun. I never saw this for myself as fun. I assume for people who do it for fun, recreationally, right. it would be okay. But um, you know, say I'm going to make example to a different profession again. Uh, for example, for an artist, you know, artists are jobs, so they probably wouldn't just draw or make a sculpture when they're feeling bad. They'll go and unwind with some other activities than the regular one. That's a good point. And uh, Prakash, like, what are your thoughts on this? I think your cat. Oh, we've got a, I've got a visitor here. Hi. Uh, so, because of say, the association of winning and losing with the game, mm -hmm. uh, with, I mean, the, probably the, the joy you get from the winning or casual game, uh, because of that feeling, sometimes I do get drawn to the game. <laughs> I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Go on. There was a huge disturbance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I do play chess sometimes uh, when I just want to feel good. But as Katrina said, uh, it's a double-edged sword. It may make me feel very bad, very bad if I keep losing. Uh, but one thing it does is that it tells me how, how my mind works. I mean, I have an understanding of a different way of understanding of how uh, how calm or uh, say how restless my mind is. Uh, I mean, the way I perform it just just tells me that, which I didn't have say before playing chess. It's similar with poker, but the thing is like if my mind is distressed, I'm very likely going to lose. So uh, I need to, I had to learn to detect these mood swings before I enter the session, because if I know I'm in distress, I would just uh, withdraw and not, uh, and skip a day or two until I feel more calm and at peace. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, between like, whether or not you're playing rated games and also and whether or not you're playing unrated games. Is you are very, uh, your voice is very low. We cannot hear you, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Uh, still very low. low. Is it all right now? Oh, yes, it's a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. There's a huge disturbance. Yeah, sounds like an invasion. <laughs> okay, maybe it's the wind. I, um, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, that, it's, I'll it's, just, I'll just do something to the windows. It sounds like aliens are arriving or something. Yeah, I think it may happen if you just adjust the headphones. Yeah, uh, probably could be. Uh, it should be a little better now, but well, let's see. Um, I was yeah, saying, we can hear you now. I was saying, is there a difference between, is there a rated, unrated distinction in poker, the way there is in chess? When you, when you play a game uh, or a match, what, uh, is there such a thing as rated, well, in chess, for example, say Prakash is 2000 rated, say his rating is 2000, and he's playing a rated game against, say, me, and say my rating is 1200, and say he loses, his rating will come down, like, Say we are playing on a website, say we're playing on chess.com, which is a website where people do go uh, to play um, online chess. Say he loses to me, say he loses a rated game to me uh, on chess.com, his rating will come down by a huge margin because he's losing to someone who is like considerably worse than him. So is there such a thing? But, but whereas if he lost that game and that game was unrated, he wouldn't lose any points. So okay, is, is, this, is there um, a limited distinction in poker, like the way there is in chess? Uh, no, no, there, is a, there isn't anything like this uh, in this, just nothing like that, no. Right, right, I see. Uh, and I, I'm guessing Prakash will agree that losing a rated game can depress you more than losing a <laughs> rated game, right? Uh, 
Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you associate so much importance with the rating. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let me let me come to a different different set of questions, and this has got to do with role models. There is a very philosophical argument which suggests that having role models isn't really a healthy way to live one's life, because once you have a role model, you tend to idolize someone almost entirely. You tend to overlook their flaws. You tend to like look past their mistakes and you tend to live your life through someone else's experience and that tends to be not a very good thing but if it's a role model in a very specific like walk of life say i don't know say you you want to be an athlete and usain bolt is a role model you want to be a pole vaulter someone like i don't know some famous pole vaulter is a role model like do you think with games like poker and chess having role models is helpful can it be helpful or are there things like playing styles or the e era in which like the previous generation played in being different from the current era that makes it very difficult for someone of the present generation to idolize someone from the past like I'll start with Katrina um yeah, so the second point you've made where poker in the last 30 years uh, has changed so drastically that people from previous era aren't even considered good anymore these days. Yeah. And um, it makes it very hard. Uh, but obviously you can have a role model in, in modern days. But again, I wouldn't, for myself personally, I wouldn't call it a role model. I would rather call it an inspiration. But then again, what's important is what you do with this decision. Like, okay, this person inspires me. So instead of just putting a poster with him on the mm -hmm. wall, what I should do is see if he does any teaching courses, uh, see who was his teacher, find out how who be this person became who they are, uh, rather than just admire them. And I think it's fine if you do it that way. Do you have do you have any such coaches or role models or idols? Um, I wouldn't call anybody I have an idol. There, are, there is a number of people from whom I learn, I purchase training courses uh, who I find admirable in the context of the game, um, of course. And I want to be as good as them um, at the game. But um, it changes, it also fluctuates mm. because the be um, as, as your level improves, as the types of game improve, as the stakes uh, improve, you find diff different levels of teachers. And also some players are great players, but about teachers, again, like with everything, some people just can't teach. And some people are very gifted at teaching. So there's a number of retired poker players who are doing teaching now, and the teacher is mod modern and great, but they don't actually play anymore. So. It's, it's actually, actually, a constantly changing environment. Actually, there's a long list of Ukrainian chess grandmasters who do a lot of teaching. Like, I know, I know some friends living in the UK uh, who are not that good at chess. Like, they're not international masters or freedom masters or grandmasters, obviously not. Uh, who do take some, I know two guys who take uh, online lessons from this Ukrainian GM. Um, and I'm not bringing this up only because you're Ukrainian. I forgot, I forgot this GM's name. <laughs> And he, like, uh, you, you might know this, like, Ukraine has a great history of chess. Like, like Vasily Ivanchuk, uh, I think Sergei Karyakin used to play for Ukraine, right, Prakash? Until maybe 2006 or seven. Uh, like, Ukraine does have a good history of chess. So there are all these players. And I think the reason why people from Western Europe uh, sort of, like, tend to like having coaches from the East is somewhat financial as well, like the rate that they will charge yeah, you. it's cheaper. Uh, it, it's cheaper. Well, I think uh, chess is quite big because obviously I spent all my adult life in England. But when I was a little girl, uh, when I went into my first grade of school, for uh, in my school we had chess mandatory classes wow. as part of our study curriculum. Um, I didn't learn very much, but uh, but uh, yeah, it was mandatory. We had one hour a week, and we had our notes, and we had to do exams, and um, it was quite deep for seven-year-olds. And who, um, was, who was the teacher? So of course, not every school is like this. So was the teacher? Sorry. Someone, was the teacher someone who used to play chess professionally? 
Oh, I have no idea. I was seven. <laughs> I just looked at the person and I thought, oh, this person's old. And that's kind of old judgment I made when I was seven on people. Everybody looks old when you're a child. <laughs> Prakash, um, role model, coaches, what are your thoughts? Um, no, I think a role model, is, role model is too strong a word. I, I have, there are many people from whom I've learned. There are many, I mean, in today's day, there are so many YouTube channels. There are so many, uh, can you hear me properly? Mm -hmm. Uh, so there are so many YouTube channels uh, where people have designed their own videos. Where you can you can get access to this, uh, say, all these different kind of openings in chess uh, without paying even paying money. So there's this and yeah and I'm I mean I am in the middle of following these many many people right now. Right uh, and then. Uh, then there are these Twitch streamers that we, that we have talked about. And just by looking at them, so for example, uh, I have learned a lot from Nakamura. Great American chess grandmaster. I, 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 yeah, but I wouldn't say that um, he's a role model. For me. Right. I mean, he's a role model probably with his chess moves, but not. Anyway. Right, right. And also, like, let me like ask this question to both of you again. Like, do you think the countries in which the game that you're interested in has been historically popular, uh, like, plays a role? Like, for example, like Prakash and I come from India. Like, there is a good amount of historical evidence that suggests that chess was probably invented in India. Like, it was either ancient India or ancient China. And when people, like, when young people in India think of chess. They don't think of it as this foreign game that never sort of existed as a part of Indian culture or Indian civilization. So even if they're not that good, they feel a sort of oneness uh, like with the game or like they, they do want to be good at it. So I, I really don't know much about the history of poker, like where it first originated, which like historically, like what countries produce the best players, like with chess, like for a long time, it was the Russia school, like the Soviet school, like uh, Botvinnik, uh, Mikhail Tal, and all these people. Although many of them were not really Russian in the modern sense. I think Tal was from Latvia, right, Prakash? Like he was born in Vega, Latvia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was was. Of, although he's Russian, but he was born in Baku, Azerbaijan. Um, so like Katrina, like, do you know, like, what was the history of poker like in terms of which countries produced good players like in the past which countries are doing that now it's well poker is an interesting one because it obviously chess have history of, of somewhere 5000 years and poker the the type of poker we play nowadays is very modern so there is a number of different types of poker and through the last through the 20th century um, they shifted in what's more popular what's not and i actually don't know much about what was before but uh, in early 20th centuries it became quite popular and there is so many types and uh, the game we play now majorly uh, well there are two games that are most popular now it's texas hold'em and uh, pot limit omaha and those two i think they started being popular going on the rise from 70s and 80s um yeah. and this is what we're playing at the moment and i don't know when they were first born, to be honest. Um, and uh, geographically, uh, because poker has a bad reputation and it's an interesting one. Um, some countries have a ban on it. Some countries have tax on it. So for example, in the UK, you don't have to pay tax on uh, poker income. Uh, countries like Germany, for example, or Austria, you do have to pay tax on your income. Um, some countries don't allow it at all. So even though players come from all over the world, uh, they all move to the countries where it's allowed. So England is a very popular one uh, to go to because the game selection is good. There's a lot of players and there's no tax. Austria has a strange history of banning sports, like different kinds of sports. If I'm not wrong, there was an edition of the Summer Olympics in the early part of the 20th century which was held in Vienna maybe. And uh, that particular edition didn't have boxing, 
because boxing at that time was banned in Austria. Well, Austria bans all sorts of strange things. And there's, of course, that famous joke, what, uh, what has been Austria's greatest achievement of the last century? You know, like... Well, the, yeah, it, you know, well, Germany, the, Germany put a tax on poker in 2012 or 2013, and until then it was fine. But then uh, one man gave an interview about how he abuses the system because it turned out he was making income from poker and claiming social benefits. And he spoke of it publicly, how smart he is it for abusing the system. And that ended up in tax on poker. And obviously, well, all the professional German poker players immediately moved out of Germany. So none of them live there anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, Pitash, uh, what are your thoughts on this um, history question? Like the development of the game and like if you uh, look at like which to be honest i don't know much about the history of chess right. i mean i i know that as you said it it's probably originated somewhere in india or china or some people even say the middle east mm -hmm. and uh, but i i but i disagree with you on the point that uh, the people in india associate themselves with chess i i i haven't seen that it's it's only very small pockets of places in India where people probably associate themselves with, uh, say, an indigenous uh, version of chess, but, but, oh, sorry. Yeah, but uh, there's no sound, there's no sense of, uh, say, collective belonging to chess. And we do think it's a very, very foreign game. In fact, I grew up thinking that it was a great, it was a game only played in East Europe. Mm. You grew yeah. up thinking so, that. Yeah, I grew up thinking that, yeah. Like even when Anand was the world champion and all the rest, like, yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, but I thought Anand, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can have sure. a game that originates in East Europe and some other people being good at it. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Also, okay, my last set of serious questions, and after that I have two not very serious questions. So, do you think... Uh, skills at games such as again poker and chess help you or have the potential of helping you in real life situations because like for example in chess like i'm going to ask katrina first and then i'll come to you prakash like say in chess for example oftentimes you get stuck in a difficult position and then you try to generate counterplay or you try to defend well you try to prevent yourself from losing you try to force a draw when you realize that uh, the match is like gone out of your hands the match has gone out of your hands. Uh, sorry, the game has gone out of our, gone out of our, whatever. So, like, uh, Katrina, do you think uh, th that's a valid point? Um, yes, I do, because the whole concept of poker is uh, you are under time pressure to make uh, an analytical decision mm -hmm. quickly, and it has to be an optimal decision. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that does train that skill where in an urgent life situation you learn to separate from your emotions you stop panicking and you just analyze and uh, count your best options mm -hmm. and try to foresee what will happen and what will what will this action to lead to what is your plan for the next foreseeable future so definitely yes Okay, that, that sounds reasonable. I, I really don't know much about how people like behave in like difficult situations in poker. I have only seen people play it. I haven't played it myself um, that much. Uh, uh, Prakash, like, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, I completely agree with what Katrina said. Uh, I mean, time pressure does, does teach your mind to think in a different way. And it you can apply it in, re I mean, you don't have to really apply it in real life, but your mind learns to apply it in real life. So, and also uh, it provides such a deep way of understanding, say, life or, I mean, I mean, we, we try to understand any, on a philosophical note, we try to understand, say, any situation in life with things that we understand better, say, in maths or right. in some other game or something else. So just is something that provides us with a model on which we right. can put some other very complex situation. That sounds so it, uh, yeah. it's probably it's a diverse 
it di diversifies our way of understanding. And I'm guessing both of you often, like both of you often have thoughts about games that were maybe played by you a long time ago, right? Say you are cooking or you are reading or you are running, and suddenly you think of a position or a moment that happened in a game maybe two months ago or two weeks ago. Like, ha like has anything like this ever happened to any of you? Not, not to this extent, I would say. I try to leave the game where it was and bring it up. So, for example, if I'm going through hand analysis with um, uh, somebody who's coaching me or with my friends, then we will replay, recreate the hand. The only time I can remember is, I still remember this, as I mentioned at the start, three years ago, I've made a mistake, a uh, very bad one, and it went all over the internet. Um, so I still do think about it, and I think, what a shame, I've ruined my life. But <laughs> other than that, no. I mean, that really happened. You did make a mistake, and it did go viral on the internet. Uh, yes, it did, because it was a re relatively big, well, average size tournament, so it was being published online um, as the game was playing, and obviously there were my photos all over it, the, and there is a description of the hand I've played, and I've played yeah. it terribly, so, and then, um, like, two, well, even a year later, some people still would pick on it, because people from the local community I live in remember me uh, doing that <laughs> because it was at the very late stage. It was at the final table of the tournament. And yeah, I just have to live with it now. Okay, that's that. Like, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Prakash, has this ever happened to you? Like thoughts about games that happened many days yeah. ago coming back to you all of a sudden? Yeah, because of this online, uh, because of this boom in online chess or because of to say the considerably high amount of online chess that say modern chess players play. I mean, there are, there are positions that run in your mind constantly. And uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes very difficult to forget say one position, which probably which, which you don't have a solution to. Or, or, I mean, where, where, where seeming that the solution seems very simple, but it's not, it's not right there. Right. And it, I mean, it keeps coming back like a math problem. I mean, if you're not able to solve a math problem, it co keeps right. coming back to you if you enjoy it. Did you two ever study study poker and chess respectively? Like study books on poker and chess? You did, right? Yeah, of course, a lot, and I'm still doing it. It's a constant process, and um, books tend to go out of date too quicker than, uh, well, game changes too quickly for the books to be that reliable, but um, the online courses from these uh, people who have mastered it uh, constantly are being bought and studied. Right, right. A lot of work. Yeah, I, I haven't followed that many books which say discuss positions because I, at a point, I, I did, I did borrow some books from library, but they were so old that they really seemed out of date, as Katrina mm -hmm. was saying. As Katrina said, like, I, but I, I do enjoy reading biographies of people. So right. You didn't. Think... That gives me inspiration. So. Oh, you do enjoy, it. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I do enjoy. It. Yeah. Let me just. Uh, we we maybe will. We're probably gonna end the episode in maybe five or six minutes. So here's my last serious question, and it's a bit of a dark one. I have been reading lots of reports about sexual harassment in like online circles, not just online circles, even in like circles uh, of gamers, like in real life. And let me uh, start with you again, Katrina. Like, did you ever feel that you were maybe unsafe, say at a casino after a certain time of the evening, uh, say you you know you're playing well, or say you know you're not playing well, but you know say after the game is done you have to go home, and you don't feel so safe. Well, uh, with this I have resolved this problem for myself many years. That every time after a session, which is usually quite late, I take a taxi, and I never take a walk unless I'm with my friends. Right. Uh, so I would never walk home alone, and. Um, in general, the players, like, have you ever had any unpleasant interactions with? Well, 
I did. I do have them because some people are just disgusting, uh, and unfortunately, uh, poker has only around one percent of women. Yeah. So usually it's me. So usually it's me and another hundred and fifty men in the room, and some of them are obviously gonna gonna be. Uh, messed up and when I was younger I used to feel very uncomfortable I didn't know what to do uh, because uh, well I was shy I didn't want to upset anyone but um, like with time and as I grew up I learned to t be very rude to people and if somebody makes me uncomfortable I uh, speak very bad words to them and I can go to the manager I can go to security and casino is a very safe place to be because there is cameras 24 7 there's so right. much security so if somebody's causing me discomfort I just report them um, but yeah being a female in this field is a struggle because sometimes you know I, I want to make friends and people take it wrong because yeah. And sometimes at the game, people come in as I've never seen a girl play poker and they behave like I'm some, like they're in a zoo and I'm some kind of monkey. And I used to be so frustrated at this when I was younger, but now I just, right. I just put my earphones on so people don't talk to me. And very often I don't have music on, but I look so I, like if I did, so people don't chat to me because I hate having these conversations with these semi-drunken men. Uh, so I just... So, and, and this, you know, I'm guessing uh, those drunk gods, th those those drunk people might not even be poker players. They may be just there to... No, no, no. Yeah. Yes, of course. So people who play consistently, people who know me, of course, they treat me with normal respect as normal people. But random people who walk in the casino, never been in, they behave really strange. Uh, it's... Right. Uh, some people are just strange. They say that since they're in casino, they can do whatever they want mm -hmm. and they can say whatever they want. And if they take a risk to do so, they face um, a security being called on them. So that's fine. Prakash? You, you have to be harsh with those. Like, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. And as I said, no like, since, around it. Uh, since almost all casinos have cameras fitted like at reasonable angles all over the place, if there is evidence to be yeah. found of bad behavior, like the evidence will be found. Of course. Well, it's also essential to have good relationships with uh, casino management because I have, in the casinos I go to, I have good relationships with managers. So if I go to them and discuss a problem, they will trust me. They know that right. it wouldn't come out of thin air. I wouldn't make a complaint if it didn't matter. So they will always take my side as well. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. The, the thing that you just said about keeping like a good relationship with the manager. Uh, Prakash, like, what are your thoughts on this, on this subject? Uh, no, I, I mean, that there is, I, I haven't heard of any such situation in chess, really. Because- no, So no one ever like made a pass at you, uh, <laughs> being like too yeah, impressed, being, like, being too impressed by your chess skills? I think no. That's an advantage that we enjoy. And no one ever said never, things like. Yes. No one ever said things like, "Let's go to my hotel room and I'll give you mate in two. It's a joke. Can you see the joke? No. Mate in two. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, as I said, I mean that's an advantage we enjoy because, just because of poker. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was the last serious question, and for my. Very last question of the episode, I'm going to ask both of you, I'm going to well, tell both of you that you have this small window of maybe two, three minutes to ask each other questions about their games. Like Prakash, we can ask Katrina something about poker and Katrina can ask Prakash something about chess. And I'm guessing both of you know something about the other game. Like you said, uh, you when you were at school, like there were chess lessons. So you probably do know what the game is, what happens how many pieces there are, how many squares there are. And I'm guessing you know something about, let's say, Texas Hold'em or something. So if you, if you want to ask each other anything, like, now's your time. I, okay, I, I at, the, at the risk of asking, say, two, two basic questions, I would still ask. So, in chess, <laughs> Can I get it? 
can I get a bit louder, please, Prakash? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm saying in chess, there is a say a numbering associated to each of the pieces. And as probably you know, uh, a pawn has one point, uh, a rook has five points, and the minor pieces like bishop and knight have three points, the queen has eight points. Nine. And at any, I think eight, but at any point in the game, you can just count the number of points that you have and your opponent has, and that gives you a fair. A rough, rough way of say understanding the material in the game, and probably for someone to up abstractly evaluate what the who is winning or who is losing. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, is there a similar way in say poker to evaluate uh, mm. say positions? Mm, well, if we are in a tournament, um, so the difference between cash game and tournament is in cash game. Five pound cheap chip is worth five pounds. In a tournament, you buy in say for a hundred pounds, and you get fifty thousand chips. So they're not the same thing. So as a tournament progresses, your goal is to accumulate as many chips as possible. So if somebody has three hundred thousand chips and another person has a million chips, you can see approximately how deep they are in a tournament and which their approximate position is. And in online, they usually give you the ranking while the game is going on like the updated ranking who's got the most chips and what's your position currently so mm. if this answers your question not really because uh, i was i mean from what i know of poker is there's this hierarchy of uh, say uh, how how you win i mean if you get if you have a higher card you win or if you have a two of Two, two cards of the same number you win and then if you have said two doubles you win and then this okay. hierarchy runs on and on oh well with this i um i wouldn't say there isn't anything like as immediate as you exemplified in chess because in poker it doesn't matter how good or bad your hand is as soon as it's better than another person's so you can have just a high card mm -hmm. but if it's better than the high card of another person you're still gonna win um okay. and Good. i do have a question to you so i don't know much about chess tournaments so could you please tell me what how how does it happen so uh yeah uh so generally i have participated in university chess tournaments uh, and what happens is that every university sends say, three or four teams and two of those teams play for the university championship. And uh, one team contains four boards. Uh, and then you you face another team which has another four, four people playing on their board. And uh, you you either win as a team or you, or you lose as a team. Uh, so, so this is the kind of tournaments that I have played in mostly and uh, yeah i mean uh, so Maybe if, you, if, if you want to understand what the how it looks like then there's a huge room where uh, say tables are put and all the teams they sit there and one one after another and you can even look at other others games and uh, yeah. I think a very concrete example would be, say, there is one team with four players, A, B, C, D, and there is another team with four players, A1, B1, C1, D1, and say, A is playing A1, B is playing B1, C is playing C1, D is playing D1. Say, A loses to A1, so A1 has one, A has zero, B draws with B1, B1 has half, B has half, C wins against C1, C has one, C1 has zero, and say, D and D1 draw as well. So if you count the number of points for each team, so A had zero, uh, B had 0.5, C had one, and I think D had one as well. Did I say one? D, D had half, so it's two, and on the other side as well, you, you get two. So now if, if something like this happens, you can say uh, that I mean, there's been a draw, like two, two draw between the two one. teams. Whereas A1 can very well say, I did win my game, but his team didn't win the match so to speak it happened yeah it happened in the last tournament actually uh, i was winning all my games but my team was uh, 
I mean, they were not. They had tough opponents. I, I was getting easier opponents, and I, I could win many games. But how long time-wise does it take for a just? Oh, uh, so it it varies. Uh, it depends on what tournament you are playing. The tournament that I was playing and what format? Had, it, it was classical format, and we had seventy-five minutes for each each member, and then you had thirty-second increments for every move that you play. So even when your time runs out, you still have thirty seconds to make one. And can you have like if you have more than two teams, is that does it technically happen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we Other had teams. four teams actually. Yeah. Yeah, we we our university sent four teams to this tournament. And do you have some prize system in place, or how does uh, it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a university championship. Uh, that's the main championship that everyone is playing for. and then there is this another championship which is player championship so because of the varying degree in the quality of the teams and because everyone has sent say a lot of teams they create two to two trophies one trophy is for the upper graded players and one trophy is for the lower graded players yeah and i mean and also uh, the the way the teams are matched is not pre decided it's not that uh, say there are five teams and we already know that one plays two and then one will play three and then one will play four it's not that the teams keep playing and as they are playing after every game their ratings are being decided and then they get matched to a similar rated team they don't get matched to a very very lower rated team so a lower rated team can never get matched to an upper rated team okay that's very strange i mean i have not seen this with say other sports uh where the matchings are pre decided or they are based on yeah uh, say choosing the best champion but here i mean if you are a lower rated opponent you don't get to play the best people the best teams I mean, if you continue being lower rated, then no. But if you're lower rated at the start and then no, you if, do well in the tournament, no. But if you win, if you win, if you start winning, you then you're not lower rated anymore. Automatically improves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you will face the upper rated players. And as I was saying, so, little, sorry, go on. Oh, so would so for example, you spoke before. If you have two thousand rating and somebody has twelve hundred rating. would you as a person holding 2000 want to play against someone so low or not because i assume you will get less rating for beating someone yes. weak but you lose yes. more but if i want to win i mean if winning is my only i mean of course if if i if i want to win i would like to face a lower rated opponent but uh, from altruistic point uh, obviously i want i would like to face a uh, say a 2100 or 2200 who would probably match my rating and would be a challenge Mm-hmm. and who would beat you yeah yeah but not uh, say 2500 <laughs> hopefully not but if i face a 2500 then i mean there's a very small very little chance that uh, i would be, i w- i would win so but you wouldn't lose that many points either for losing to a person no no so it's always worth a try <laughs> it 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 actually happens uh it's very interesting as you said uh so the last time i was playing the tournament when they were uh, deciding the boards they always take our names along with our ratings to uh, decide us and sometimes they miss the rating because they don't know the rating so they only write the name and my opponent was curious to know my rating i mean he just like right he just right away asked what is your rating i was shocked i didn't know what to say because i mean people play differently by if they know your rating or if they don't know your rating and i said out the correct rating and then after the after the game ended my uh, my teammate was sitting on side of me he scolded me he said you shouldn't tell you shouldn't have told him your rating because then he knows a lot about you <laughs> 
but I mean, to me, it seemed like we are playing on the board. I mean, it doesn't matter what you know beforehand. Also, Katrina, is it possible uh, for someone to chess uh, to cheat in online poker using a very strong, say, computer? By by say by an engine like in chess, there is this thing called an engine, uh, which is basically a program that can play chess, like an AI of sorts. And there are like quite a few of those. So there is one called Stockfish, there is one called Alpha Zero, there is one called Komodo, there is one called Lila. Uh, and the thing is, like you are playing, say you are playing online against someone, say playing a game of chess online against someone, to cheat. If you are really determined to cheat, what you can do is say you are black in the game. You can open a separate window where you are white, and say your opponent plays a move. Say your opponent plays d4. You can play d4 there and see what Stockfish is playing, and then you can play that here and. Oh, uh, I see. Like I that. see. I mean, but but the thing is, it's easy to get caught that way. So, is it possible in poker? Um, absolutely not. So, for example, uh, any kind of bot or anything like that is banned on every website. And there is a similar thing for what you're describing. Um, so, it's a program that analyzes GTO game theory optimal for poker. However, um, it takes approximately. 20, 30 minutes to process one hand. And in an online environment, every hand lasts approximately one minute. So even if you take a second computer and decide to do that on the side, you will get your result, uh, which can't even guarantee you win because what this analysis gives you is the most recommended options. So it still doesn't like, it doesn't it solve the exact, it doesn't guarantee you anything. Block. Well, yeah, we call it variance because it's it's ingrained in the game. And if you didn't have it, the game wouldn't be profitable because people wouldn't want to play it then because yeah. what attracts players is the ability to win. So you have to consider that always. And uh, yeah, so you can't cheat, no. So when people say the website is rigged, it means that they're just very bad. They lost a lot of mm. money and now they're angry. Right, 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 right. Yeah, well... Yes. I'm guessing that does happen a lot with many frustrated users. Um, okay, we can maybe end the recording part of the episode, recorded part of the episode here. Well, I said recorded, I'm still recording. And I'd ask you both to stay on for maybe five minutes. And after that, we can all log out. Um, would any of you mind if I took a screenshot of, of the screen? Yeah, of course. As it, as it sure, go ahead. Go ahead. And I'd also want to well, I mean, both of you are on Instagram, right? Prakash, I think mm -hmm. you're on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so would it be okay if I posted it on Instagram and tagged you too? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And sure. I, I, think, I think you will figure out uh, who the other person is just by looking at the tags. So it won't be, it won't okay. be confusing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fine, done. Okay, so many thanks for speaking to me, to us, sorry. Many thanks for speaking, speaking to us today, uh, both of you. And maybe we can chat some other time about some other topic. Many thanks. Bye-bye.